Somatic mosaicism means that different cells in the body have different genomes from one another. We've typically thought that the genome is the same in every cell in your body, but that's, that's just not the case. The ability to look at single cells is, is really the cutting edge technique that we've now been able to bring into neuroscience. This technique lets us to actually sequence the genome of single cells and hundreds of single cells to, to find out how they're varied from one another. In my laboratory, I have a, a, a close collaborator, Ian Burpulis, who's a, really a wizard chemist and molecular biologist who's improving existing technology so we can even get better and better at looking at single cell genomes and get more information out of every single cell. Will Cronister and Lana Milburn just joined the lab and they're focusing on different aspects of both improving the genome amplification techniques and in, in looking in the computational side of being able to extract the information out of the data that we get from a DNA sequencer. And then the other side of my lab uses human-induced pluripotent stem cells. So these are cell lines derived from real people, which we can make into neurons and then look at human neural circuits in a dish to start to really break down and understand how the mosaic is affecting neural circuits and the function of neural circuits. Lisa Harbaum is a graduate student in my lab who's really leading that effort. The current project is being funded by the National Institute of Mental Health. They decided to pursue this idea that the genomes vary from one another in the brain and perhaps that can help explain some of the missing heritability in neurological diseases. We are one of three teams within this network. We'll be the schizophrenia team and they've also decided to fund a autism team and a Tourette syndrome team. And so we've all come together to look at schizophrenic brains and find out if there's a different mosaic in the brains of individuals with schizophrenia than in normal individuals or, or healthy, what we would call neurotypic brains. So hopefully by looking at brain genomes, we can whittle that pool down from hundreds to just a few, and then we can have a really good sense of where our target is to make a drug to try and, to try and help people.